Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, let's continue our look at creating DVDs from your Media Composer and Symphony timeline. We talked all about exporting in the last lesson and in this lesson what we're going to do is we're going to start to break down how to encode these files so they're ready for you to start to create you know, your fantastic end result DVDs in your application of choice. Now we're going to start out a little bit differently than what most people might think we'd start out with. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to show you how to compress these files inside of Apple's compressor. And I know you're thinking to yourself, Kev, that's bizarre. Why would you do that? Well, remember, a lot of people have made the switch from Final Cut Studio, which is Final Cut version 7, which includes compressor over to Avid's Media Composer. But what's important to keep in mind is you're switching from a suite of applications to an individual editing application. I know it comes with squeeze and we'll get to squeeze in a later lesson but you know what you already have a fantastic compression program with compressor that you had inside of Final Cut Studio 3 so why not utilize that because there's some great little tips and tricks that I can show you to create DVDs quickly and easily. Okay short introduction here let's actually get into Apple's compressor and let's get started. Okay, and as you can see on my desktop here, I have my files for DVD, and in here I have my three different files. Remember, we were talking about three different types of DVD files you might want to create. We have the anamorphic, of course, and remember, when I exported this, what I also did was I exported the audio with it as well, which you can hear playing in the background. And what I also have is a letterbox version. There we go. And I also have, of course, the pan and scan version. Now what's important to keep in mind here is that really only two of these are going to be 4x3, which is Letterbox and Pan and Scan. The, the anamorphic one is really going to be designed for 16x9 television. So what we're going to need to do in Compressor is we're going to need to set up two different presets, one for 16x9, one for 4x3, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create droplets for you to quickly drag and drop this footage onto to create your DVD ready files quick and easy. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to close up my folder. I'm going to come right down to my toolbar here at the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come right over here to Compressor. Now I'm using Compressor 4, but the technique I'm going to show you works exactly the same in Compressor 3 as well. Now you'll see that right off the bat, once I launch Compressor, I could actually get in right away and set up a template to create DVDs, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm actually going to do is say, don't bother to show me this again, and I'm simply going to say cancel. What I'm going to do now is instead of coming in and choosing one of the presets that I could very well do right from here, you'll see that if I actually come right back up to the top, what I can do is come down to disk burning. Inside of here, you'll see I have a template for MPEG-2 for DVD, and I also have an H.264 for Blu-ray, as well as a Dolby Digital Professional uh, template for my audio files. Of course, that's the quick and simple way to do it, but I just want to get in and show you how you can set these templates up yourself so that you can get the exact compression type that you want. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to twirl all these menus back up. We're going to navigate right over here to our plus icon with the drop down and I'm going to come down to MPEG-2. Now as soon as I do that you're going to see that now inside of custom I now have a template called Untitled MPEG-2. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this 16 by 9 for DVD. And you'll see the file format right here off the top is MPEG-2 and the extension is M2V which is exactly what we want. The stream usage is of course SD DVD. Now the very first tab we get to is video format. So let's set up our anamorphic file first. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my video format to be NTSC because I live in North America. Next is going to be the frame rate. Now this is where uh, what you choose here is really going to determine the field dominance because you'll remember I exported these files as 2398. If I come up here and I select 2398, you'll see the field dominance is set to progressive. Now I'm just going to leave that for right now. You'll see where I'm going to come back to this in just a second. The aspect ratio, we know for anamorphic that the aspect ratio is 16 by 9. Now you remember I said before that the frame rate is going to determine the field dominance. Now I have 2398 up here selected as the frame rate. You'll see that if I come down to field dominance and I turn it on, nothing actually turns on because I can't change the field dominance for a 2398 frame rate. But if I switch this to 2997, you'll see that progressive can now be changed to top or bottom. Now it's also important to keep in mind, and what I'm going to do is I'll just switch this back to be 2398, and what I was going to say, what's important to keep in mind is you'll see that the only two options I have in here right now is 2398 and 2997. Why is that? Well because I'm using NTSC as my video file format. If I switch that to PAL, 
you'll see the frame rate switches to 25 frames per second. So I'm just going to switch that back to NTSC. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that I have a bunch of other frame rates here grayed out. Why? Because I'm only dealing with standard definition DVD. So let me just switch this back to 2398. Now, the last option in here is a big one. And this is a question I get asked all the time, which is, Kev, I'm setting up subtitling for my DVD. And I have the subtitling set up to start at one hour. What I can do is I can make sure that when these files encode, that I can have them encode with a specific starting time code. Because the problem is, is if they get in and they subtitle this as starting at one hour, yet I encode this to be at 0000000, -0000 guess what? None of my subtitles are going to line up when I attempt to match them up. So it's important that if they've already set up the subtitles, let's say they set this up months in advance, it's important that you get in and choose the starting time code carefully so that everything lines up. Okay, now in this case, it doesn't really matter. I'm not dealing with subtitling, so I'm just going to turn that off. Next tab, quality. This is an important one. This is where you're going to get in and decide between variable bitrate and constant bitrate. Now you're going to see we have a whole bunch of options in here. One pass constant, one pass variable, one pass variable bitrate best, two pass variable bitrate, and two pass variable bitrate best. To be perfectly honest, if you're creating just a standard screening DVD, just stick with one pass variable. If you're getting in and creating a DVD that let's say you're going to be selling or something like that, get in and worry about two pass variable bitrate best. Like I said, it all really depends on the type of DVD you're creating and what it's going to be used for. Like I said, I'm using one pass variable bitrate. Now for me in most cases, I just set the average bitrate to be about four megabits per second with the max maxing out at about six megabits per second. For me normally, that's sort of where I sort of like to leave it at. Now, next we have GOP group of pictures. I'm just going to leave this exactly the way that it is and you'll see next I have extras. Now, if I was getting in and creating DVDs inside of DVD Studio Pro, I'd worry about this and if I wanted to get in and do things like include chapter markers, I could do that, or even multiplex the audio. That's where I would do that from here. But I'm pretty much happy with this template. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to save it. Once I save it, you'll see over here, this is it right here. What I'm going to do is just come right back to the beginning here to show you just sort of the entire layout of everything. And remember, if at any point I need to get in and adjust this template, it's no problem. All I have to do, and I can just, you know, switch to a different one here just for a second, that one there. I'm like, okay, you know what? I need to update that 16 by 9 template. No problem. Just simply select it, come in. Let's just say I wanted to change, oh, I don't know, the, you know, the quality to be 5.5 megabits per second. As soon as I adjust it, I can now say save and I can overwrite that. Now I want to point out a couple other things because you'll see I can come down here. I can come in and adjust some frame control if I wanted to, getting in, deinterlacing, things like that. I can also actually get in and add filters if I wanted to. I can even come right down here to geometry, get in, do some cropping and things like that. But in most cases, I'm going to leave things exactly the way that they are. Okay, so what about our 4x3 DVD? No problem. All I have to do is with this template right here, I'm simply going to right click and say duplicate. You'll see it creates a 16x9 for DVD copy. All I'm going to do is just adjust this to be 4x3. For DVD, I'm going to come right in here to my first tab, and all we're going to do is we're going to come right down here and change the aspect ratio from 16 by 9 to 4 by 3, say save, and we're all set to go. Okay, but I do need an audio setup as well. So what I'm going to do, navigate right up here to the top, I'm going to drop down my menu, and I'm going to come right down here to Dolby Digital Professional. You'll see again it creates another template for me. Now in this case you'll remember I only had stereo audio. So you'll see right now the target system is set to DVD video. Right now, the audio coding mode is set to stereo, two channel, left and right. The sample rate is set to 48, and the data rate is set to 192 kilobits per second. I'm actually happy with this. I can just leave this the way that it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this Dolby Digital. And I'm just going to take out professional because I don't need to know it's professional. And I'm just going to call this stereo, just like that. We'll say save. There we go. Again, I can simply duplicate this, call this Dolby Digital 5.1. What we're going to do is we're going to come right down here to the audio coding mode. I can simply click on my little gearbox. What we can do is drop this down to be 
5.1, you'll see I have my three front channels, my two rear channels, and what I can do, you'll see right now it says one or more data rates were changed because they don't comply with the limitations of this target, which is fine. You'll see basically what it did is it changed the data rate from 192 to 224, but what I want to do is I want to enable LFE, which is the sub channel as well, so that's my point one right there. Sample rate still 48, you'll see I can get in. I can now adjust this anywhere from 224 kilobits all the way up to 448 kilobits. What I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to leave everything else the way that it is and I'm going to say save. Now in most cases most people would think I'm done. What I have to do now is open compressor, come in, start bringing files in, adding presets, etc, etc, etc. I'm not going to do any of that. What I'm actually going to do is create droplets and creating droplets are actually very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this up. Now I could set this up for 5.1 but I don't have any 5.1 audio tracks on my clips. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this up for 16 by 9 DVD stereo and 4 by 3 DVD stereo. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to select the first template right here for 16 by 9 for DVD and I'm going to hold command down and I'm going to select Dolby Digital Stereo so I have both of them selected. All I'm going to do now is simply click on Save as Droplet. And what's going to happen is I'm going to be prompted as to where I want to save this to. Now before you go and click Save, what's important to keep in mind is right here is to choose the destination for the droplet results. Meaning once you take something and drag it onto the droplet, where do you want to send the files that it's processing to? In most cases, I just like to send it right back to the source, but you could send it to a cluster storage, to the desktop, or even to a user's movie files. But you know what? If a file's coming from somewhere, I normally like to send the files that it's creating right back to where it is, so I always know where everything is. All I'm going to do now is simply say save and you're going to see now that I have this really cool icon on my desktop called 16x9 for DVD. All I'm going to do is the exact same thing for the 4x3 DVD again. Simply save selection as droplet right onto the desktop, save. So what I now have is I now have these two droplets on my desktop. All I'm going to do now is simply quit out a compressor and let's come into my files for DVD. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the anamorphic file and I'm going to drag it right here on top of 16 by 9 for DVD. Now as soon as I do, you're going to see that I now have the droplet appear up here that's going to say, okay, well here's what I'm going to create with this droplet. I'm going to use this video template and this audio template here to create the two files that you want. So all I'm going to do is simply say submit. I'm going to say go. And what you're going to see is in a matter of seconds, those files that you needed to have encoded are going to appear right here in your files for DVD folder. You'll see there's the video file dvd.m2v and what's going to happen about a second later here you'll see it actually encoding. You can see the size of it getting bigger. You'll see a couple seconds later we now have the .ac3 file in the same folder. So all I have to do now is simply do the exact same thing with letterbox. I can take it, drag it right over here onto 4x3 for DVD. Now you're going to see the difference this time is that when I dragged that file over and I dropped it on the 4x3 for DVD, I didn't get the same window that I got before. Now why is that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, now that letterbox is done, I'm just going to take pan and scan do the exact same thing onto 4x3 for DVD. I'll just drag it and drop it right there. Again, the window's not going to appear. Now why is that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take anamorphic, drag it right back over here onto 16x9 for DVD. The reason that it didn't appear for 4x3 for DVD is because I can choose not to show the window on startup. Very, very handy to have. So depending on how you want to work, if you don't want to see this window ever, what I'm actually going to do is just quit out of that droplet because I don't need to see it anymore. You can actually choose it so that that window is not going to pop up every time. Basically what you can do is take multiple files, simply drag them and drop them onto the droplets that you want, go to lunch, go home at night, come back in the morning, and guess what's going to happen? Everything is going to be ready for you on your desktop. You'll see there's my file encoded for DVD ready to go. Now, of course, in this case, what's important to keep in mind is that it's no longer a QuickTime file. Now, in my case, it was a QuickTime reference file. But because it's no longer a quote-unquote QuickTime file, you're not going to get the audio playback at the same time. You'll see that we have the audio as a completely separate file. You'll see here's the 4x3 version as well. You'll see 4x3, 16 by 9 very cool. Again, pan and scan is going to be the exact same thing. There we go. Now at any point if I want to know more about this file, remember that fantastic free utility. All I need to do is simply right click. I can come down and say open with and I can come over here and say media info Mac and you'll see now I can see that this file here is 720 by 480 23976 and it's ready to go to be thrown into a DVD 
and create some cool menus to send it out to a client. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.